as everybody's getting into the midpoint of uh, the MAC conference race, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of games uh, coming up, a lot of interesting games been played. Um, I'm sure it's going to uh, there's going to be a lot of great games played as uh, you finish out the, the MAC schedule. Um, you know, Bowling Green, uh, an excellent football team, uh, put a lot of points on the board, and has just gotten better and better defensively as uh, as they've continued to play. And and so um, you know, it's uh, certainly a very good football team that that we'll be uh, facing there. We're looking forward to it. Um, and. Obviously, uh, looking to play at a level that's uh, going to let us win the football game. With an offense like that, how, how do you look to slow a team like that down? Well, um, there's a combination of things that I think that must happen for you. Uh, number one, you you got to play physical football, and um, you got to make sure that that starts up front, but, but continues through the backer core and and in, into the into the secondary and, and um, in terms of slowing them down. Then you've got to match up with uh, some of the speed that they have in, in the receiving core, which is not necessarily easy to, easy to do. But um, you've got to make sure that, that you're not giving them big play after big play after big play. And, um, you know, at times that's what they've been able to do this year. So um, we'll see how that goes. But, um, you know, our guys are uh, excited about playing the game because they – no, it's a, a, a great challenge. Have you seen uh, offensive numbers like this in the conference since you came here? What they're doing specifically this year with, you know, 45 points, 600 yards a game? Yeah. Um, no, I can't recall through my time here um, seeing a, a, a conference team that's put up those, uh, those kind of numbers. And, you know, um, that starts with a – quarterback and obviously they've got one that's considered uh, maybe the best in the Mac and um, his, his numbers probably uh, uh, verify that um, they've got great receivers you know Roger has been a guy that's been dominant for him now for a couple years and um, continues to be dominant but they've got other guys that that are able to uh, run by and make the big uh, make make the big catch um, you know they will go deep on you uh, a fair amount of the time. And so if you're not ready to uh, keep that from uh, being successful for them, then you're, you know, you're going to have a, a, a long after, in this case, long uh, evening in the, in the game. Um, but, you know, we've got good, uh, good people in the secondary. We'll need to get a pass rush. Uh, but when you talk about all that, you still need to, to stop the run. The other thing they do extremely well is, um, you know, they, they throw, throw a ton of screens, and their screens have been very successful for them. On the flip side of that, too, uh, from the offensive standpoint, for your offense, knowing that BG is going to get some points and some yards, what does that do to your offensive game plan from speed, play calling, tempo, that kind of stuff, um, knowing that every possession against them is, is so valuable? Yeah, um, you know, I don't think you play a team like this and – and if you don't put up points, feel like you you got a chance of being in the ball game. So you you're going to have to be ready to put up points. And then then you look at well, what's your best opportunity to put up points? Is it to go fast? Is it to slow the game down? Um, you know, whatever enables you to uh, whatever fits you the best, and whatever enables you to put points on the board, that's what you got to do with. And um, you know, you can go in with a game plan to slow it down, and to, uh, but but that's not not necessarily um, necessarily the answer. It, it could be the answer, but it's not necessarily the answer. And, um, and so we'll, uh, you know, we'll try to do what, um, what we do best and uh, try to get better at it than, than what we've done the last couple games. Um, and so with that in mind, I, I think you'll, you'll see us still try to run the ball some um, and then also try to get a passing game that's that's going to be like we were in the early part of the year, a very efficient passing game and um, a system that didn't turn the ball over. How do you get the running game going or, or at least back to where it was the first month of the season? It's mm -hmm. been a real issue the last two weeks, right? Yeah, it has. 
Um, we've we've cut back uh, on the number of running plays that uh, um, that we're using, and we're just trying to get better at what we're doing. Um, you know, I think we've uh, we've really looked at both our running and throwing game uh, very hard uh, the last couple weeks, and uh, trying to look at you know why the numbers are where they're at, and what can we do to to certainly Im Im improve that. Um, and so we'll. You know, we, we've made some changes in, in how we're how we're going about trying to put points on the board, and hopefully that will have an effect. Less is more kind of approach. Well, yeah, just making sure that that what we're doing, we're doing well. You know, um, the execution part of it has got to be better than what it's been in the in the last two weeks. Now, you know, there's things that. Uh, a tribute to that, you know. Um, uh, defensively, you're, um, you know, we're down in numbers in in terms of uh, we're not where we want to be in terms of injuries, um, and you know, and that's been uh, uh, somewhat of a factor, of course, um, and and that's true really on on both sides of the ball. If you just go down our roster and look uh, look who's out and and actually been out for uh, some of those guys for all, most of this, the season and some of them middle of the season have, um, uh, have been taken out of the, of the games and um, when we have guys playing banged up now you know that's not an excuse because um, um, that just doesn't fly you know you you need to have your uh, number two guys ready your number three guys um, ready and and obviously that that that's extremely important and you've got to Make sure as a coaching staff, you're not trying to do too much, especially when all of a sudden you're dealing with number two guys uh, at, at some positions on the on the field who aren't getting maybe, or number three guys who aren't getting maybe as many reps. And um, that's one thing that we tried to do uh, somewhat this season was to cut down our length of practices and and somewhat the number of reps we've been getting to try to make sure that we weren't getting guys uh, injured as we went through the season. Um, and to some degree, that's been effective because we have not gotten guys injured um, in, in practice. You know, these have all been game game injuries. You know, for the most part, there may be one or two, but uh, but they, they're the vast majority of these are all all game injuries, which gets very difficult to control. How does how does the team handle the the do or die nature of this game? The, if you lose this one, you you can't win the back east. Mm -hmm. If you win, you, you stay alive. Does, does that factor in, in, in how the team prepares it? All? Well, I, th I think it does to some degree because you you have long term goals as well as short term goals, and and obviously in order to reach the long term goals, we've we've got to have a, a a game where we come out on top, um, and and so you know that's a that's a factor. You know, um, we try to make sure that we're breaking it down to where we're really taking one game at a time because we do know that in the MAC conference, anything goes in, in terms of if you're not ready to, to play a certain week, um, even though a team may not be a team that's at the top of the conference, in the top tier of the conference, um, you, you're, you're going to get beat. And, um, you know, there was, you know, you, you, you look at some of the games here lately and you, this, some of the scores are, are Kind of boggling in terms of you know maybe how close they were when other games versus other teams they were there was a lot of separation there and now and you so you think if you compare scores that this game is just going to be this way it doesn't necessarily happen that's not how football what football is about there's a lot of motion in the in the game and um, uh, you know that obviously plays a little bit of a factor. You guys do the one game at a time approach. Do you, do you try to ramp it up when you know you're the big underdog going in, which which you guys are on Wednesday night? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, definitely uh, in, in this business, you use everything you can, and um, and you know, it's no secret to anybody. Uh, it's no secret to the press, no secret to the players, no secret to your coaching staff. You just try to muster up everything you can to uh, to give you an edge. Do you look at all? In, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Buffalo played. Green pretty close and mm -hmm. down early, but then it was a six-point margin. Do you mm -hmm. 
as a coach or a staff look at, at games like that to not only give you hope, but maybe mm -hmm. to, to game plan a little bit as well? Well, Miami played Buffalo very, very close last last night, and um, I think you see that in the MAC, and um, uh, you, you do see it in other conferences, of course. But but you know we've said from day one that the MAC is very close. It's a very competitive conference, and if you're not ready to play your best football, you're you're probably going to have problems in a game. Um, so you you know you, uh, you you look at you look at all that, but uh, the bottom line comes down to you know, how well prepared your guys are to play, um, you know, how in tune they are to, to stepping on the field and playing their, their, their best football, you know, how many guys on the field are, are, are limping around from injuries that they can play with, how many guys are out. Some of those things as you get into this point of the year start to come into play, you know. And, um, you know, th there's a lot of things. Um, you know, when a, when, a, when a team has their – um, their off week can factor into trying to get your team regenerated and, and healed up some and get ready for a big push coming down the stretch versus having a, uh, an off week very early in the season or having an off week at the end of the year, you know. So there's a lot of factors that, um, that enter into it. Bottom line is you just got to uh, prepare well. Um, your players got to have confidence um, going in. You got to have good game plans, and you got to execute them. It's been tough to, to regenerate and refine that confidence for your team this week. Two straight losses. We've had great leadership, and uh, that leadership remains intact. And um, um, so I don't question where our football team is at, mentally or emotionally. Um, we just got to have some good things happen. Uh, if we have some good things happen, I, you know, we'll 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 be playing good football. Off-topic question. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the press conference earlier this week, but Jerry Till stepping down in Minnesota, and it's a guy you had a, a decent relationship with mm -hmm. in conference. And, and since he left, did you have thoughts about that? What it was like to see see a guy you, you know deal with that in, in a very public way? Yeah, you know that's um, that's a difficult situation. Um, you know, I did uh, did see the press conference. Um, very emotional uh, press conference. Um, it's so clear that that he's a guy that just loves the the game. Um, he loves his players and working with his players and his coaching staff. He's the right person uh, for this game. Um, and uh, obviously, he you know he he will he, he thinks beyond just wins and losses. You know he. He cares very much about his players, and he, he, he wants things to work well for his players off the field later in life. Um, he's not just in tune to, to, to winning football games, and, and uh, I think the profession uh, needs, you know, as many guys uh, like Jerry uh, in it that, uh, that we can get in it. And, and so he'll, he'll be uh, missed on that end of it. It's hard, um, you know, he's 51 uh, maybe, or. He's in his early 50s, and um, you know, for anyone to be taking be taken out of uh, uh, what your life has been all about for as many years as it has for him and his family, at, at that early age becomes um, you know very very uh, difficult. Um, I consider him a, a good friend. We've known each other for a long time. We do keep in touch um, on occasion, and. And um, so just pulling for him and, and uh, what's best for certainly him and his family. Did any of it ring, not close to home, but uh, did it resonate particularly with you? You know, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of coaching open, openings coming up this, this year. And during the course of the season, this was another one. You, uh, does any of that make you think, scratch your head, and what am I doing in this crazy business where guys are dropped seemingly retiring or getting fired left and right throughout the course of the, the season, during the season? Well, <clears throat> losing is, is hard on you. Um, and um, I don't think there's a coach that's in this game that, that doesn't take losing personal and is affected um, by it. Um, winning, the opposite end of it, of course, you know, and, and um, 
obviously uh, when the when the losses come it's uh, it can be very draining um, on you and um, in uh, in in Jerry's case uh, you know he put in a ton of hours and um, he did everything he needed to do to get his team prepared uh, to be the best they could be year in year out um, he's a very loyal guy to a to a program to his coaching to his coaches um, you know I, I health reasons uh, you know uh, him stepping down because of that is the only way I could have foreseen him not continuing in in this business the long hours wouldn't have wouldn't have done it um, you know the the work that you have to put in the physical work that you have to put in um, the ups and downs of the game wins versus losses none of that would have driven him out I, I, it, the only thing that could drive a, a guy like Jerry out would be uh, uh, you know would would be obviously some kind of illness and I kind of skirted that. <laughs>